mind. I'm what? About the conscious mind. Conscious mind. What do you want to know about conscious? <laughs> see, conscious mind is the mind where you are awake and see things. <coughs> but there is also unconscious mind behind it. And there is a subconscious mind and there is a supraconscious mind. And beyond the supraconscious, there is also collective supraconscious. And beyond the subconscious, there is collective subconscious. This unconscious mind. The unconscious mind is, in a way, we can say, is the Kundalini. Now, <clears throat> when she enters into your conscious mind, you become enlightened. The conscious mind is the mind that is aware of the surroundings, aware of everyone being there, aware of all the things. But an enlightened conscious mind, which is of a high level, is much more conscious of things than you are. For example, I'm quite conscious of people who are catching on the heart. I'm quite conscious of the people who are not yet there. I'm quite conscious of the people who are perfectly there. I'm quite conscious of the people who are nowhere near. But it's all right for me, because I, with my conscious mind, can raise them up. So it's a different situation with me. But with other people could be that your conscious mind is all the time, <coughs> depending on your level of advancement, maybe worried about small, small things like, um, uh, I have to go home now and it's getting late and will I get a bus or not, could be like that. Then there could be another conscious mind which is thinking about uh, how far I can meditate, how far I can go with it, all kinds of things. But there could be a conscious mind which is enlightened, if it is enlightened. It's just uh, uh, just uh, getting all the essence of what I'm saying and developing and nourishing itself. So when you are enlightened, the conscious mind <coughs> is something like a tree into which the sap is now flowing. It may be that it is just like a leaf, or it may be it is like a flower, or maybe it is like a fruit. So it changes its forms once he gets Realization. If a person gets Realization, then the conscious mind goes on getting more and more light. Say, for example, when the electricity comes, you can see this room, you can see another room, you can see another room, you can go round and see, and again, again, you visit all the rooms, then you become aware of all the rooms, so you are conscious of all these. But in the beginning, you are just conscious of a room where you are standing, isn't it? So the conscious mind's uh, definition cannot be given after Realization. A person like me, say for example, has a conscious mind, that might envelop the whole world. Or a conscious mind of a person who is Realized Soul is still not anywhere, just started, then is only conscious as to where is right, where is left, where is this. So before the Realization, the conscious mind sees things around you. Out of that also there are categories. Some people see, say for artist can see something, and a, a scientist can see something, uh, another poet will see something. So it depends on the conscious mind how it is, has got the trend. But still it won't see something that is subtle behind it. And that only is possible after you get your Realization, all right? Mother, sometimes the ego masquerades as Guru. Uh, how can we tell when that's going on in us? You see, when ego comes up, I don't know much about it, you see, because I'm <laughs> We can say when ego comes up, then a person becomes arbitrary. First thing is he becomes arbitrary. It starts it start deciding, I, I'll have this, I'll have that, 
I like this. You see, this is the one, one thing. Secondly, it takes out itself from the collective, it becomes very arbitrary. Collective it removes itself from. But the spirit is the other way now. Spirit is, it cares for the collective. Uh, it doesn't become arbitrary at all. And it never says, I like, I want. It, I drops out. See, you can easily see, very easily with your discrimination, that egoistical person is not even liked by the person who has ego. If he sees himself in the mirror, he says, Oh God, what this wretched nonsense, what a temperament it is. It will not like itself. There was a girl, lady who was a very hot tempered woman. And once she came to my puja and I said, Now, what is this heater you have brought before me in India in the hot season? One heater put before you. I said, Oh God, please remove her, she's like a heater. Nobody understood it, you see. But I said, Please remove her. So then they asked her, You get down, mother can't bear you. Then she was very angry. What is this? What's wrong with me? What, what, what have I done? After some time, you see, people said that we have nothing. Then nobody would talk to her. She was left al al alone. And then she was also very unhappy about it because she was left alone. She thought, What's this? Is insulting. Why should they leave me? Then after some time, she realized that there must be something wrong with me. I must find out. There's something nonsensical about it, something filthy on me. I should throw it away. Then she started working it out and seeing herself and all that. And she became a very, very sweet person. But she dared not face me. I was quite afraid. So her daughter came to see me one day. I said, How is your mother? She said, Mother, she's all right. You ask her to come and see me. So she said, I have never felt such joy as I felt that day when you called me. I said, I knew you have improved so much. She came, I had taken a watch for her. She said, Mother, you brought a watch for you? I said, Yes, I brought a watch for you. She said, Thank God, that filth is gone. Thank God. Fed up of it. That's how when you develop, then that sweetness, the beauty, everything comes up. But you see, the ego is, if you play upon your ego, it adheres to you, you get identified with it and you cannot get rid of it. But I've seen one case which is such a beautiful case. And I was sitting in my room and I could feel with the child when she came in and I asked her, Where is your mother? She was herself surprised. When she told her mother, she said, I've never had such a joy. Such a joy I had that, Oh, mother has recognized me as I. I said, I always recognized you. So this is what it is.